Hey everyone, Travis here from Travis.media. Today I want to talk about a practice that I've actually never considered, but now think is absolutely crucial to your career as a software developer. A couple of years ago, I was in the midst of some interviews for a new job, one that would give me more flexibility so that I could travel more, and I got the question. Tell me about a time that an incident happened at work that required immediate attention from you or caused by you and what you did to remedy that problem. It's a very common question in coding interviews. And I started on a story that I always use that happened to me a few years back when some code that I committed broke the automation for a major company that we were supporting. There was a sync that happened three times a day and a department within that company relied on that sync to do their work. Well, I committed some code, there were no issues and I went home for the day. Well, I came back the next morning and there was a firestorm going on because the company overnight hadn't received the last two sinks. And upon some investigation, as I was arriving to work, it all pointed back to me. So I continued on with this story with the interviewer and I was like, so here are the details. Well, when I got to this point, my mind actually went blank. It had been a few years and I just couldn't remember all the details of what I did after that. And I looked stupid and I should have prepped for this. And here's the thing, to this day, I still don't remember all of the details. It's gone. Some people out there have really good memories. They just remember everything. Well, I don't. This is why I preach so much on learning to read documentation and not relying on things you've remembered. It's all I can do because I don't have that sponge memory like some people have out there. But here's the bigger problem. That entire experience that was a wonderful story in job interviews that I could repeatedly use is gone. It's completely gone. I can't use it anymore. And guess what? I haven't really had any major incidents since. So what to do? Well, I came across an article called Advice from a Software Engineer with eight years of experience. And while there's some great advice in this entire article, I just wanna focus on one section. But before we do this, let me give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, logic, and computer science interactively. Brilliant is fun, practical, and has thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics from computer science and programming to algorithms, Python, AI, math, and other tools to help you level up your skills and keep those skills sharp. And it's perfect for busy, self-taught people like me and you, making it easy to master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. Maybe you're having a hard time nailing down linked lists or loops or concepts like point Pointers. Brilliant will help you visualize and internalize these concepts in an engaging, interactive way. Today, I switched things up a little bit and learned about vectors, which are a way of describing movement with math. And they're used in physics, graphics, machine learning, and many other applications. But like I said, Brilliant can help you digest new concepts and solidify old ones that can apply across many different facets of being a software engineer. And you can get started today for free for 30 days and get 20% off an annual plan by using my link below. That link is brilliant.org slash Travis Media. Now back to the video. So the guy that wrote this article gives his career evolution. He did an internship, some school, work study. He was a software engineer turned senior software engineer and then software engineer too. And the first thing he notes is things I wished I had started doing earlier. In the main section we're gonna talk about today is this one, write a work log. I'd actually rather call it keeping a dev journal. Here's what it says. A work log, or a dev journal, is a document that contains the list of tasks you accomplished. The granularity and the type of tasks don't matter as long as you keep track of what you did. You can fill in this document at any frequency you want. I would advise doing that on a weekly basis. I agree with this, I'll tell you why in a minute. I'll also show you what this would look like. So tasks done during the week are still fresh on Friday, so you won't struggle writing them down. Why is this work log important? Well, for the following two reasons. First, to remind yourself of all the things you have done over the past six to 12 months. This is valuable during performance reviews so that you can show your manager what you have accomplished and why you deserve that raise or promotion. Now, I really struggled with performance reviews. In one of my past jobs, I really hated this, not because I didn't think it was necessary, but because I just didn't like having to come up with a bunch of stuff that I did over the past year that was valuable. And this is why. We do so much in a year's time, and we move on from each task just to get fully engulfed in the next task. And we go from task to task to task, and we just can't recall all the details. At least I can't. You might be one of those sponge memory people. I'm not. This is where keeping a dev journal or a work log can really improve your career. I wish I would have done this earlier. With it, you can hit the high spots, the key things you accomplished, and sell yourself that raise or promotion better by having access to the bigger picture. So that's number one. Number two, to keep track of projects, notable responsibilities, and critical numbers. Example being decreased latency by X% for a critical service. 
that you had over your career. This is great for completing your resume whenever you want to venture into the waters of the hiring market. So the resume is another big one. It's something that you're always updating and making better. And it also includes tasks and jobs from years ago where you may have forgotten the details. Or you may want to update those details based on what else you've learned over the years. I started writing a work log roughly two years before leaving my first company. So over the past eight and a half years, my work log contains only three years of data with some gaps here and there. When I had to write my resume in late 2021, I had to rely on my memory to remember what I did during those first five years of my career. To say the least, it took me some time to remember everything valuable, and I'm sure I forgot some of them. That's key. I'm sure I forgot some of them. It's easy to forget the details of how far you've come and to gloss over those key milestones that would impress future employers or your team lead in a performance review. We're like machines. We come to work, we code, and we solve problems, and we move on. And we do this dozens of times per year without ever reflecting on the amazing progress we're making or the lives we're changing in making apps and systems and services better and more reliable for users across the globe. So what does this dev journal or work log look like? Well, let's finish this up. You can use a work log template if you want. Here's an example. Personally, I've been using Microsoft Notes for the first two years. Then I just switched to a Google Doc with bullet points. So let's look at his Google Doc. And I'll link to this below if you can't access this article. It might be behind a paywall. So here's the example. Current. Then there's the week of December 6th, Project Thanos, helping out with the chat team, design proposal, proposed adding tech debt removal to the backlog, all of this stuff. And then here's week of November 30th. So if you did this weekly, you would have 52-ish entries per year. Now that's not too big to handle. It's completely searchable. You could reference it quickly. You could add links to your GitHub repos within it, or maybe you could link to more in-depth journal entries. Maybe you keep a more deeper journal somewhere. And so you worked on this project, it made you feel a certain way, or it taught you a big lesson, and you journal deeper, and you just link to it from here. The opportunities really are endless. So it's easy. Just create a Google Doc, and each week, just do the current week. When that week is over, just switch it to week of whatever that start date is. And then just do it week by week by week. And then when a performance review comes around, or you need to update your resume, or you just want to see how far your career has taken you, you have it all referenced here. You should be, and I'm learning this too, documenting your software career in a way that you can reference all of your years of past work and accomplishments and promotions and growth, such that it aids in moving you up and to the right in your software career. What do you think? Is this something you're doing or something you would do? Let me know down in the comments and let's get the discussion going. If you found this video helpful, as always, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. And I'll see you in the next video.